this morning I'd like to talk with you for a little while on the subject, uh, the question that cannot be answered. The question that cannot be answered. It is not a good thing to trifle with the Spirit of God. For many years we sat close to each other in church. We enjoyed each other's company. We listened to the same intense messages. The same pleadings. Give your lives to Jesus in total surrender. Give your all to him. To lay aside the allurements of this base world, Sabbath after Sabbath, we would sit and we listen. But there was something else. The world in New Kingston, and then New York, London, that word was just to allure. The lights, the latest fashion. The painted nails, the earrings, uh, the gold chain, the fashionable look. You know what I'm talking about. Those tight jeans that accentuate uh, the female um, beauty. The curves and turns of her and gully. The fashionable look, the parties, uh, the all that money could buy. It was just too attractive. She could not give it up. She couldn't turn away. The life was just too alluring. So she went with the world, living in the church, yet with the world, trying desperately to marry the two. Recently, she passed from life to death. In her early 40s, yet she passed. What a tragedy. The Lord had promised uh, the days of her years are three score and ten. Yet, by reason of strength, four score. So, to say goodbye, to go to sleep in her 40s, it's not what the Lord intends. It appeared Satan had won. This is an account all too familiar for us. This is my story. And I know you have your story as well. Your children, your friends, your classmates, your schoolmates. Trying to play that game. We have heard it before. A long time ago, our mother was told, He shall not surely die. For the Lord doth know in the day that thou indulge thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and your happiness will be like unto God himself. Mm -hmm. And some of us listen. What a tragedy. When we deceive ourselves that all is well, when all is not well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What will we say when we are lost? When Jesus shall say, depart from me, I know you not. Is this a game we are really prepared to play? Yeah. When there shall be weeping and wailing and grinding of teeth? We have one shot at this. Not that Jesus only gives us one chance. But when it is finished, he won't say, okay, I'll give you another chance. Go back and do it over and do it good this time. No. No do-overs. No. No do-overs. My brother once says, Paul, make sure you marry a teacher. She'll say to you, didn't do it properly, do it again. She'll give you a second chance. Don't marry a nurse because she said, are your hands clean? Did you sterilize? Did you wash? The record says, Hear now this foolish, oh foolish people, 
and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence? which have placed the sand for a bound by the sea, a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it, and though the waves thereof toss, toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, they cannot pass over it. I have set the sands a bound for the sea. Will you not fear me, Israel? In Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10, we are warned, we are warned. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead mm -hmm. or in his hand, if any man, Seventh-day Adventist profess or not, if any man, many Seventh-day Adventists are not going to voluntarily go and worship the beast. And accept his spurious Sabbath. But that man have a screwdriver. And when he tightens the belt, men will give him. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. That mixture there is undiluted. Yes. As we studied last week, Sabbath evening, for the first time. He's going to pour out his intense anger upon mankind without mercy. That time, mercy's doors will be closed. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. I'm not trying to frighten you, but there is no point sugarcoating it. It's real. And I won't be able to hide you from it when it comes if you are not ready. And it cannot be long hence either. Time is done. All the signs of the times are there. They have passed since 1800s. They have been fulfilled. Those of us who live in the last days, post-1798, So look into yourselves. I can't look into you. And I can't fix anything for you. And I wouldn't like to look into you either. It's a job for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Only He can do that job. So who is preventing you? This morning we are going to look at 2 Samuel chapter 3. Turn it. We have a case there that we can learn from. <coughs> Second Samuel chapter 3. What did I say? Second Samuel chapter 3. And we're going to pick up at verse 17. If you're ready, say amen. 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 And the Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, He sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then, do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of, his, of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. Abner also spake in the ears, ears of Benjamin, that's the tribe, not the individual. And Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel, and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David, to Hebron, and 25 men with him. 20 men with him. And David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go, and I will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a league with thee, and that thou mayest reign over all that is in thine heart desires. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And behold, the servant of David, Joab, came and from pursuing a troop, and he brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. 
Then Job and all the hosts that was with him were come. They told Job, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he had sent him away, and he's gone in peace. Then Job came to the king and said, What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away, and he's quite gone? Thou knowest Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive thee, and to know the, goings, the going out, and thy coming in, and to know all that thou doest. And when Job was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sarah. But David knew it not. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Job took him aside in the gate and spake with him quietly and smote him under the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Ashtiel his brother. And afterward when David heard it he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab and all his father's house and let there not fail from the house of Joab one that hath an issue, or that is a leper, or that leaneth on a staff, or that falleth on the sword, or that lacketh bread. So Joab and Abish, his brother, slew Abner, because he had slain their brother, uh, Aisha, at Gibeon in battle. And David said to Joab and to all the people that were with him, Rend your clothes and gird you with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bier. And they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. And the king lamented over Abner and said, died Abner as a fool. Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet in fetters, as a man falleth before wicked men, so fellest thou. The king lamented over Abner and said, died Abner as a fool died. Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put in fetters. As a man falleth before wicked men, so falleth thou. <laughs> a long time ago, God had provided for Abner. In the record, God made provision for his people in Numbers 25, and we are going to look at verses 9 through 29. It's your time to read. What do you say? Numbers 35. And we are going to see why Abner died a fool's death. Numbers 35. We pick up at verse 9. Who is ready to go? It was a powerful and strong voice. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge. Cities of what? Refuge. Cities of refuge. For you. That the slayer may flee thither which killeth any person at unwear, unwares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give six cities shall ye have for refuge. How many? Six. Six. Six, six cities of refuge. <laughs> Tell us some more. Ye shall give three cities on this side, Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan. Canaan. So six uh, on one side of Jordan, and six 
sorry, three on one side and three, and on, the three on the other side. Which is so easy access. Yes? Yeah. Continue. Which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge both for the children of Israel Amen. and for the stranger. For the church and the people in the world. God is not partial. Yes? And for the sojourner among them, that everyone that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Verse 19. Verse 19. The avenger, the revenger of blood himself, shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But, verse 20. But if he trust him of hatred and hurl at him by laying of weight that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he dies, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or if any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him that he died, and was not his enemy, neither sought his arm. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whether he was fled. And he shall abide in it until the death of the high priest. To the end. So did God make provision for his people? Yes. 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 Even if you kill a man accidentally, God made provision. As we read, what does the city of refuge remind you of? Church. The church. Has God made provision for us to escape mm -hmm. death on this side, Jordan? Yes. 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 Continue, sister. Okay, now. We are going. You want to go to 26? Yes. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whether he was fled, and the revenger of the blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. Amen. But so, okay. if you walk away from God's city of refuge, you fall prey to the enemy. Yeah. Whose fault is it? Yours. Yes. In the type and the anti-type, God has made provision for his people. Let's have a little more. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment until you throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Amen. It is a law forever. Yeah. Has God changed it? No. no. So why didn't Abner run? Why didn't he flee to the city of refuge? Why are we not fleeing to God's city of refuge? Died Abner as a fool died. Your feet weren't in shackles. You could run. Why do we not run? Huh? The word of the Lord says in Joshua chapter uh, 21 verse 13, Thus they gave to the children of Aaron the, uh, the priest Ebron with her suburbs to be what? For a city of refuge for the slayer. Again, in 1 Chronicles 6, 57, 
and to the sons of Aaron they gave the cities of Judah, namely Hebron, for a city of refuge. Where was uh, Abner killed? Which city? You forgot already? Hebron. Right there in Hebron were two cities of refuge. God had provided refuge for the sinner. So, so Abner really died as a fool died. His hands were not bound. Why have we not fled? Why are people lingering in the streets where Satan can destroy them? Why tamper with God's law? Why play around? Why are we holding back? Why can't we give him all? In Abner we see a symbol of all Israel, God's people, then and now to the end of time. For all Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. In Judges 2.10 the world record says, And also all that congregation right after Joshua. All that congregation. This is... This is almost impossible. All that congregation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor the works which he had done for Israel. They didn't know anything about the crossing of the Red Sea. They didn't know anything about what Rahab said last week in our studies. They didn't know anything about Mount Sinai and God speaking not saying to the prophet, write these things and tell Israel. The word says, and God spake all these words, saying. And they were so frightened when they heard God's voice. That they said to Moses, you, you know what, you, you go and talk to God. Whatever he says, come and tell us. We can handle that. But we can't hear him. His, his voice will us. It's right there in Exodus chapter 20, 17 through the end. And after Joshua died, there arose another generation that knew not God nor the things that he had done for Israel. Verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served barely. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed after other gods. The gods of uh, the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. Nice story for Israel to have done, right? But what about us? What about our worship? It's just 170 years since God gave us a prophet. And today we're hearing strange talk. Don't tell me about a prophet. At the Bible only. I don't want to hear anything from the spirit of prophecy. Have you read Woman the White Loose? It's a fantastic book. You should read it for it. <laughs> and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. We have studied that at the beginning of our study in Daniel chapter 1. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. The, pro the, 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 the promise in Deuteronomy 25, have we forgotten, should have been the fear of God will be upon them. One of you will chase a thousand. A thousand will flee. Whithersoever they went, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend. These promises are not dead. We spoke about promises in Sabbath school this morning. Are you fearful? Are you worried about the future? Are you worried that Donald Trump will begin fighting with Iran? No. Are you unsettled? Are you worried about your job? 
fear of the future? Have you walked naked yet? Have you been for a week? Do you think it might happen next week just in case? Let me keep some money in my pocket. I want to put some more money in the offering plate earlier, but you know, just in case next week something happens, a kind of just in case. Jeremiah 17. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. The point of a diamond is graven upon the table of their heart, their heart, and upon the horns of your altar. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees, what are those? The places where they went to commit idolatry. We don't do those things anymore, do we not? Huh? Every time we put ourselves before God, we commit idolatry. Every time we put aside uh, First Timothy chapter 2, adorn yourself in modesty. Not in gold apparel and so on. We commit idolatry. It doesn't have to be a big thing you go out there and sleep with 17 people that you don't belong to. No. We like to talk about fornication. We like to talk about the big sins. But what about the little private things that God, wait a little. I, I got it from here. I, I, I check me back Tuesday. My mountain in the field, I will give thy substance on all thy treasures to the spoil and the high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage which I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Because we have rejected the Lord. Cursed is the man that putteth his trust in man and maketh the arm of flesh his strength. But blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Are we making the Lord our hope? I don't just I don't want to preach today. I want to talk to you. I want the voice of the Lord to speak to your hearts. We have been doing this over 10 years ago. Now we are 10 years closer. I went to the funeral yesterday and I buried a man. Just 50 years. His kidneys failed. Do you know why kidneys fail? Poor dad. The engorgement of toxins. The liver get tired. Can't detox anymore. Kidneys, you handle it. Kidneys weren't made for that. They fail. Kill him. You look at one picture, he's dark brown. Another picture, close to his death, is jet black. Black, black, black with a grayish under toe. Loaded with toxins. Poison. Big like a beer. The body cannot get rid of the waste. It's all inside yeah. now. Yeah. Promoting him skin. Yeah. So you can see it through his skin. Eating everything that tastes good. It's not good for you. In spite of these provisions. And in the tears of David is a symbol. David cried. He mourned. But in his tears is a symbol. A prophecy of sorts of the tears of one infinitely greater. For the book, great controversy, the servant of the Lord recorded for us. Those of us upon whom the ends of the world are come, the painful words found in Luke 19, 44, sorry, 41. And when he came near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. Why does Jesus weep? The world's redeemer was overwhelmed with a sudden mysterious sorrow. The son of God, the promised one of Israel, whose power had quenched death, Lazarus, come forth. And call its captives from the graves. In tears, G 
Jesus is not concerned if I'm laying in the grave. Don't tell me that he's crying for Lazarus in the grave. For what? The minister yesterday said, Jesus knows grief. He cried for Lazarus. For what? And you're going to open the grave in five seconds and let him out. That makes sense to you. Think. He's crying for Mary's and Martha's inability to see that I am the resurrection and the life. You're upbraiding Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Why did you come so late? You're four days late. Four days late for what? To raise him from the dead? Do I need a sick man to bring life? No. Jesus doesn't cry because we die. He cries when we are in bondage to sin, slaves to sin. And nothing, nothing, nothing he does seem to have any power to move us. The word says in tears, not ordinary grief, but of intense, irrepressible agony, something is terribly wrong. In Luke chapter 19, verse 41, the record says, From the crest, the mountain top of Olivet, is looking to Jerusalem. It's fair and peaceful. And the scene that is before him, it's the season of the Passover. It's a season of rejoicing. He's not supposed to be in tears. From all the land of Canaan, across the river that we just spoke about, Israel is gathering to the temple. They are going to be in boots. It's a happy time in the midst of the gardens and vineyards and green slopes studded with pilgrim tents, rose the terrace hills, the stately palaces and massive bulwarks of Israel's capital. The daughter of Zion seemed in her pride to say, I sit a queen and shall no sorrow see. As lovely then, and deeming herself as secure in heaven's favor as when ages before the royal minstrel sang Psalm 48 verse 2 beautiful for situation the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion there is no better place sister Pearlie Mount Zion that's God's city the city of the great king in full view, we could see the magnificent buildings of the temple. The rays of the setting sun lighted up the snowy whiteness of the marble walls and gleam reflected from the gold that was on the temple. It was a perfection of beauty. What was Jesus so sorrowful about? No child of Israel could take such a look and not be overwhelmed with joy. But Jesus saw something else. Far other thoughts occupied the mind of this man. When he came near, he beheld the city, the word says, and he wept. Amid this universal rejoicing with palm branches and the singing of Hosanna to the highest, Our king has come. Here is Jesus, overwhelmed with mysterious sorrow. The son of God, the promised one of Israel, whose power had conquered death. And called its captives in tears. Were his tears for himself? No. He knew where he was going. This is the last trip to Jerusalem. He knows he's going to die. He's going to inaugurate the communion service and then they will kill him. He knew that. So, he knew his approaching agony. Was this why he wept? No. He saw the sheep gates. It was a symbol of the lamb 
that they slayed the Passover. And from that gate, the priest would leave the lamb. He knew that lamb was him. Was it this reason why he was so in agony? He saw Calvary. He saw the place of the skull. And he knew they were going to nail him to the cross there. Yet, it was not for this. These little contemplations didn't challenge his mind. No. No foreboding could tackle this mind of superhuman strength. No temptation the devil could hurl at him that wrong blood from his pores could make him look inward. He wept for the doomed thousands of Jerusalem because of the blindness and impenitence of those he came to bless and save. He could hear them saying tomorrow we have no king but caesar away with him he wept for the doomed thousands of jerusalem because of their blindness <laughs> Abna, those dying the fool's death destiny a fool's death In another 40 years, today it's AD 31. And in AD 70, the Romans would come. Destiny, a fool's death. The history of more than a thousand years of God's special favor and guardian care manifested to these people. He saw, it was open to his eyes. He saw Mount Mar Moriah, where the son of promise, we studied last week. Isaac, the unresisting youth, submitted himself to the knife of Abraham. He saw for that Isaac on Mount Moriah was a symbol of him. There the covenant of blessing, the glorious messiah had been confirmed to the father of Israel, Abraham, Abraham. Do no harm to your son, for now I know. There the flames of the sacrifice ascending to heaven from the threshing floor of Ornan had turned aside the sword of the destroying angel. Fitting symbol of the Savior's sacrifice and mediation on our behalf. A perfect sacrifice. So you and I will not have to die the second death. It's not about house and cars and silly things. Mm -mm. It's about our eternal life. Mm -hmm. It happened before. Mm -hmm. How dare we let it happen to us? That is foolish. Jerusalem had been honored of God above all the earth. The Lord had chosen Zion. He had desired it for his habitation. Psalm 91. Sorry. Psalm 132 verse 13. Though no Israel had mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets. Second Chronicles 36, 16. He had still manifested to them as the Lord God. Merciful. Gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. Notwithstanding repeated rejection, his mercy had continued. Even today, his mercy continues. His mercy is so long-suffering, we have begun to believe that it must be permanent. It will never change. If you don't believe me, read, read a, a few of these beautiful sentimental writings on Facebook. The Lord will never leave you. He will never forsake you. It will always be good.
with more than a father's pitying love for the sons of his care, God had sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. When remonstrance, entreaty, and rebuke had failed, he sent to them the best gift of heaven. In fact, he poured out everything. I have only one treasure left. That's all I have left. I'll give them my son. He poured out all heaven in that one gift. Great controversy, page 19. The Son of God himself sent to plead with the impenitent city. It was Christ that had brought Israel as a good divine out of Egypt. Psalm 80 and verse 8. His own hand had cast off the heathen before it. He had planted it in a very fruitful hill. His guardian care had hedged it about. His servants had been sent to nurture it. What could he, what could have been done more to my vineyard, he exclaimed. Not that I have not done to it. What more? I planted the choicest vines. I fertilized it. I cared for it. But though he looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. Wild grapes. Wild grapes. We got the choicest stock. We sent to France. We sent to California. We didn't go picking grape sticks anywhere and anywhere. We went to the breeders and we got the best uh, varieties. But they bore wild grapes. What do you do? What do you do then? What more could he have done? But yet he never gave up. Yearning, still yearning. He came in person to his vineyard. If perhaps he might save it from destruction. He did about the vine. He pruned, he cherished it. He was unwearied in his effort to save his vine. This vine of his planting in Hosea wait, uh, chapter 7 verse 11. Someone read for us. Another person. Hosea chapter 11 verse 8. Hosea 7 11 and Hosea 11 8. Seven eleven, loud and strong. Ephraim also is like a silly dog without heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. They don't come to God. They go to Egypt. We go to the people who are experts in finance. We go to the counselors. We don't pray. We don't come to God. Hosea 11 verse 8. How shall I give thee up? How shall I give you up, Ephraim? Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? Israel, how am I going to deliver you? How shall I make thee as Adma? Do you know what Adma is? Adma is one of the five cities that got burned. The, the, the one that we recognize is Sodom. <clears throat> So take out Adma just for a moment and put Sodom and you'll get the idea of what he's saying. Let's go again. How shall I make thee as Sodom? Mm -hmm. How shall I set thee as the wind? Mm -hmm. My heart is turned with thee. Mm -hmm. My repentance are kindled together. My heart is turned with it. Can you feel his pain? Can you feel his pain? Huh? You've never been in a relationship where a girl or a guy broke your heart. You don't know what he's talking about? Huh? So why are you so quiet? Huh? Run up. You've never loved a girl and she treated you so badly. She broke your heart. You run off with her. No. Left you in that sinking hole. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what to do. For three years the Lord of light and glory had gone in and out among his people. He went about doing good, healing the, the sick, 
uh, relieving those oppressed of demons, binding up the brokenhearted, setting free those who were bound in sin. Mary Magdalene had seven demons, not one, not two, but seven. Wow. And Satan finally decided to end her right before Jesus. Lord, Moses said she should be stoned. She was taken in adultery in the very act. This is not hearsay. It's right here. Here, Sister Yoli, this is not hearsay. We, we caught her in the act. So you can't, don't bother ask us all we know. You have a decision to make. Moses said, stone her. What do you say? That's Mary. Bound in sin. Slave to sin. Jesus came. And he says, go and sin no more. And Mary's gratitude to God is made clear that morning when she came back to the grave. The one year's worth of spite now. How much money do you earn for a year? Work it. Take all that money and go buy the best cologne you can find. I don't know where to send you. Maybe to Paris or someplace else. Maybe they make special perfume for King Fahad and his Arab people who India. sit on gold and eat on pearls and use special cologne that you and I have never heard of. But she bought that spite now after years earning. And she anointed, she wanted to anoint his body. She used her hair and she washed his feet. She wasn't done. She came back Sunday morning to finish the job. Yes. Amen. And through tear dimmed eyes, she saw a figure and she said, Sir, yes. if you have taken him, we will take it from here. Just give, give me back him back. to us. Give me back to him. And Jesus said, Mary. Mary. She heard that voice. There is only one voice like that voice. And it belonged to Jesus. Amen. And she said, Teacher. Rabbi, Teacher. Yes. Master. Master. Mm -hmm. And she leaped to grab him. He said, Do not touch. Yes. I have to present the sacrifice. Yes. To the Father. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Releasing those bound in sin. Restoring sight to the blind. Amen. I know I was born blind. I don't care what you Pharisees have to say. Sister Pearlie. I'm not calling you a Pharisee, but you know what? We have this thing we can talk. I know I was born blind. And I know now I can see. He said, go wash, after he put some mud on my eyes. And I went, I washed, and, and I now see. I see. Amen. Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But this is a strange thing. Yeah. That this man can open eyes, born blind, and you don't even know about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You've never heard of it. This is amazing. I want to find it. And when he found Jesus, he worshipped him. He caused the lame to walk. He was so desperate. He wasn't even concerned about be, being able to walk again. He just wanted to hear those beautiful words. words. They had convinced him that his sickness, his disease was because of his wretched, sinful life. And he just wanted to hear those words. You are forgiven. And then when they opened the roof and they let him down and he heard those words, Son, thy sins be forgiven me. Hallelujah! Amen. Ugly words to the Pharisees, but words of rejoicing to that paralytic. Amen. Jesus says, if it's easier for you guys, alright, let's do it your way. 
in the name of our Father. Get up and walk. Take up your bed and go. And go it home. is the Sabbath day. It is a day of healing. Yes. Just like today. Yes. The death to hear Blind cleanse the leper. And he raised the dead. Amen. He preached the gospel to the poor. Amen. Praise God. Amen. To all classes alike was addressed the gracious call. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Today must not be another Sabbath. Another coming to hear a message. Let it change you. These are his words. Not mine. Something's got to change. And it's got to change now. Every day, every week that goes by, you see things happening. When are we going to stand up and cast this life aside and walk with Jesus? Though rewarded evil for a good and hatred for love, Psalm 109 verse 5, five he had steadfastly pursued his mission of mercy, not wavering, not bending. Never were those repelled who sought his grace. And he's the same today and forever. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. I am the Lord, I change not. And if they could find grace in him, so can we, a homeless wanderer. Never had money to pay his taxes. Let, let's catch a fish. We caught a fish. And there was the coin in there. We pay our taxes. Huh? That's how you pay your taxes? You go fishing. <laughs> Waves of mercy beaten back. Stubborn hearts. <laughs> returned. In him. A stronger determination. Every time they push back. He came back. Stronger than before. Determined. But Israel had turned from her best friend. And only helped her. The pleadings of his love had been despised, his counsel spurned, his warning ridiculed. And the hope, the hour of hope was fast passing. The cup of wrath was almost full. The cloud that had been gathering through the ages of apostasy and rebellion from Manasseh all the way down to Caiaphas was getting full, now black with woe, about to burst upon a guilty people who had alone, he alone could save from that fate. Re uh, abused, rejected, slighted, soon to be crucified. But when Jesus would hang on the cross of Calvary, this day of pardon for them as a nation would cease. Uh, listen to this. The word says the loss of one soul is a calamity. The loss of one of us in here to God is a calamity. What do we say about a church? Food? A whole nation. Huh? A whole city. A whole nation. The prophet had wept over the apostasy of Israel. He had Jeremiah wished his eyes were a fountain of tears that he might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of his people, for the Lord's flock that was carried away captive. Question. What then was the grief of him whose prophetic glance took in not years but ages he saw today? He saw the people in the world. They belonged to him. He saw the people in Babylon, apostasy. They belong to him. He saw the people uh, that will gather tomorrow to listen to false prophets in apostasy. He saw Seventh-day Adventists, good and bad. He beheld the destroying angel with sword uplifted against the city. 
that had so long been his dwelling place. The angel was sent and he saw him. He knew what that angel would do and could do. He heard the voice of mothers crying for bread in the besieged city. He saw her holy and beautiful house, her palaces and towers given to flames. And where once they stood, only a heap of smoldering ruin. Jesus had warned in Mark 13, verse 14. When he shall see the abomination of desolation spoken uh, of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand it, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. The same warning today. When you see the man of sin standing in God's church, run! People look at me like I'm crazy. Run. Looking down the ages, the word says he saw the covenant people scattered in every land like wrecks on a desert, mm -hmm. desert floor. He saw Hitler burning them in the gas chamber. He saw it all. In the temporal retribution about to fall upon her children, he saw the first draft that first seek, mm. that first taste you make of your drink to check it out. Is it what I expected? The first draw from the cup of wrath, mm -hmm. which at the final judgment, she must drink to the drinks. If we allow God's grace to pass us by, the seven last plagues are going to be poured out. It is a matter of will we drink them or not. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, his intense anger. His anger is not against us, it's against sin. Rebellion, rejection. Look at the world we live in. We have gone mad. <laughs> Divine pity, yearning love found utterance in the mournful words. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings. But he would not. Oh, that thou, a favored nation above every other, had known the time of thy visitation and the things that belong to thee. In 1844, when the word mocked the Advent movement because they preached that Jesus is coming soon, when Jesus never came, in October 22nd, 1844, of the tens of thousands belonging to the Advent movement, they all went back. As I said in Sabbath school this morning, God is going to test your faith. <laughs> Paul says we build. Some of us build with gold. Others build with silver. Some build with wood, hay, and stubble. Can he stand the fire? How oh, about wood? You want to build with wood? What kind of faith must you have to withstand fire? The fiery trials that must, are you listening to me? That shall definitively must come upon God's people. What kind of material are you going to use? Rock. Rock? Did the fire from heaven destroy the altar that Elijah built on Mount Carmel? Yes. yes. Did the fire destroy the cities of the plain? Sodom, Gomorrah, yes. Sebawim, yes. Adma, Laklish. Yes. What do you want to build with them? Gold. Good choice. Does fire destroy gold? Yes. Yeah, it melts. Yes, but yes. when it's done, do you still have the gold? Yes. 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 Purifies it. So, do you want to build with gold? No. Yes. No. 
No? Yes. What do you want to build? Yes. Well, we just saw that rock burnt to ashes on Moon Carmel and in Sodom and Gomorrah. I never said what you want to build on. Your foundation must be the rock. Yes. But what do you build with? Gold. Gold. Gold tried in the fire. Gold tried in the fire. When it's done melting you down and you cool off, you still, still have gold. gold. Even better than it was before. Because yeah, now the dross is gone. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. But they would not. It is not merely servants, delegates, prophets, pastors that we refuse. But the Holy One of Israel himself, Christ saw in Jerusalem a symbol of a world hardened unbelief. You can't go there and tell anybody anything. I don't want to hear. Hastening on to beat this, meet this judgment. He saw the record of sin tracing human misery and tears and blood. The heart sickens. But even this, his hand, his powerful hand, could not turn back the tide of human woe. Few would seek their only source of help. He was willing to pour out his soul unto death to bring salvation within our reach. And today, if you hear God's voice calling, harden not your hearts. I have been there, done that. Of course, I haven't done all the things, but I, I don't have to go smoke marijuana. The guys who are around me smoking it, I know it smells. You can't fool me with that. I saw what it did to them. I saw those who slept with every female around the block, or the girl who slept with every guy. That's not the way I thought. I saw those who were rich. Bill Jobs wrote a very painful record of his misery with 30 B I L. L-I-O-A. 30 billion dollars. Misery? You're not supposed to be miserable. You're supposed to be at the peak of happiness. You saw my little mom here, that little halfway gone woman, sitting there, 98, knees hurting, as happy as a lark. Because when her friends invited her to that first drink when she was 19 and she went, she tasted the liquor. She was so upset, she went home that night fussing with God. Is, is this all you have to offer? Is this all? <laughs> Do I need to check it out for myself? Mm -mm. No. She told me already, it doesn't fulfill. And now, with nothing, with nothing, she has everything. Amen. You can't take anything from her. No. If you want her clothes, she'll give it to you. She frustrated me. I used to supply her with food every month because I was living in another city. By the time I came back in two weeks, she had nothing. <laughs> it's frustrating. Um, brother so-and-so didn't have anything, so I pinched and pinched. Sister so-and-so didn't have anything, so I pinched and pinched. Your pinches are quite big pinches because I have brought enough. More than enough. It's supposed to last you more than a month. And two weeks in, it's okay. it's you have nothing. <laughs> so I am at the point of frustration. How do I keep my mother supplied? Huh? So that if Sister Silma should pass by, she wouldn't say, Paul is a terrible son. <laughs> Here is his mother, and she literally have nothing. That's how she lives. She exists on nothing. Because she is attached to one that supply her needs. Amen. She has nothing, yet she always has enough. Amen. At the moment she has nothing, bam. Amen. She got it. Amen. Something comes mm. She told a story yesterday. Mm. Some family member was always sending her money. And the money would vanish. It never got to her. It was hijacked somewhere along. The <laughs> and you know, I said, you know, 
and you've lived fine without it. She lived fine without it. So, God wants us to trust in Him. Mm -hmm. He has provided grace. It is within our reach. And He wants us to trust Him. He's in tears. He's crying. The Son of the infinite God, troubled in spirit, bowed down with anguish. The scene fills heaven with wonder. Look at Him crying. He can't get through to them, can He? This scene reveals to us the exceeding sinfulness of sin. There's no little sin. Mm -mm. Any time you read the Bible it's and your life is out of congruence with the least, fall on your knees and say, God, give me strength. It's not about condemning you. It's not about shoving you down. You're doing this. You're doing... That's not important. What is important is for you to get to him who can fix it. Amen. He has a solution. I am telling you, there's nothing you can encounter that he can't fix. Amen. All he wants is our attention. He just wants us to say, Lord, take it. But instead, we turn the other. <clears throat> it's looking down to the last generation now. The word says, that's us. That's us, brethren. Whether you believe it or not, that is us. If you give me enough time, I'll show you. He saw the world involved in a deception similar to that which caused the destruction of Jerusalem. The great sin of the Jews was their rejection of Christ. For there is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. My Seventh-day Adventist friends who have apostatized, brilliant men and learned, who know right from a perspective of Egypt, Africa. That's where the true information is. One of them last week, a string of loose words. I'm gone, I'm out of here, frustrated by what is going on in Washington, at the border, in politics, all over the world, the injustice. They can't deal with it. I'm not flustered. I don't get upset with race relations. Whether you're black or white, sin is True. sin. Sin is sin. Yes. But I mean this. Sin doesn't respect any color. Take all of us. You flip America over and you put black people in charge. Give them the power. Guess what will happen? The same. Same thing. Same thing. We will oppress. And we will do the same thing because of sin. They rejected Christ. The great sin of our Christian world is the rejection of the law, which is God's authority, the foundation of his government. We today have set aside his commandments at naught. We, we don't bar any today. The Christendom out there may reject it openly and say we're done with the law. Amen. But we on the inside, we don't abide by them either. Mm. The Sabbath is lightly regarded. We rewrite the script. You can do this, you can't do that. We have no love. Love is written in the law. Showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. They are joined. You can't love him and not keep his commandments. But where is the love? No, we have campaigns all over the world. Cleaning people's houses. Painting yards. On the Sabbath we are doing good. What kind of nonsense? Huh? Disobedient to parents. This comes close home. I can walk to my daughter's house from here. If I slept at her house last night, 
I wouldn't drive to church. Are you hearing me? Mm. I found out where she lived yesterday. Mm. So I just think we take heart. Take heart. Disobedient to parents. We forget all the time that one of the ten says. It's not optional. Honor your father and, and your mother father. that your days may be long upon the land. It is one of the ten. The word says when we are guilty of one, we are guilty of all. Keep the Sabbath all you like. First Corinthians 10 verse 11. Just in case you think that was them. Says now all these things happen unto them for examples. Examples, the word is, but it's examples. And they were written for our admission, our warning upon whom the ends of the world are come. That's us. They were written for us. It is an example of what we would do. Revelation 3. I know thy works, Jesus says. That's us. Look, this is a post 1844. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would, I wish you were cold or hot. But then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or not, I will spew thee out. That's a pretty way to say it. The Hebrew says, I will, Greek says, I will vomit. Because thou sayest, I am rich. And increase with goods and have need of nothing. And do not know that mental illness. Stop 20 of our nurses here before you leave today. That's mental illness. Yes. To have a disease like that of the mind, not something on your skin, you can see that something has changed. But you think you are something else that you are not. <laughs> and knowness not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Your sins are right there in the public for all to see. That's what this nakedness is. And you don't even know it. You think it all is fine. Mm -hmm. The Savior's prophecy concerning the visitation of judgment upon Jerusalem is to have another fulfillment of which that terrible desolation is but a faint shadow. Read it. Go back and read in your history books the destruction of Jerusalem. The worst siege ever on record. That is but a faint shadow of what is to come. Hmm. <laughs> In the fate of this city, we may see the doom of a world that has rejected God's mercy and trampled upon his law. <laughs> the heart sickens, the minds grow faint in contemplation. Terrible have been the results of rejecting the authority of heaven. But a scene even darker is presented in the revelation of the future. The record of the past, the long procession of tumult, conflict, revolution, the battles of warriors, the confused noise, garments rolled in blood. What are these in contrast with the terror of that day when the restraining spirit of God shall be wholly withdrawn from the wicked? We have no idea what that is like, it has never occurred before. There is coming a day soon when God is going to withdraw his spirit. And Satan is going to have full sway. You think because we served him for 6,000 years, he likes us. Let me tell you why he doesn't like us. Even when you serve him, you remind him of God. We were made in God's image. So we make him sick. He's only in church today because he wants to defeat Jesus. Mm -hmm. He wants to get as many of us into hell as possible. Mm -hmm. and that's why he's in the church business. He doesn't like the church. He doesn't like salvation. He doesn't like anything that looks remotely like Jesus. But he has to counterfeit it. Brains work to get us. But when he's in control, you will see what he will do. You don't want to see that. You want to be on the outside looking. Get an audience. 
then we will behold that day. Amen. But you know what? We have hope. Yes. Isaiah 4, 3. We're not there yet, although we are close by. But in that day, as in the time of Jerusalem's destruction, God's people will be delivered. Amen. Everyone that shall be found written among the living, Amen. you can make that choice today. Christ has declared that he will come the second time to gather his faithful ones to himself. Then shall all the tribes of Israel mourn. Why are they mourning? Because they rejected him. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. Matthew 24, 30 and 31. Then shall they that obey not the gospel be consumed with the spirit of his mouth and be destroyed with the brightness of his coming. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 8. Like Israel of old, the wicked destroyed themselves. Who destroyed them? The wicked destroyed themselves. They fall by their iniquity, by a life of sin, rebellion against the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. They have placed themselves so out of harmony with God. You have four children with a woman, then you turn around and tell the world you're a woman. I, I, I wasn't a man, I was a woman. They're so out of harmony with God. Everywhere you see this uh, fake rainbow flag going up. Huh? Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. It's the fastest growing church in the world. Fastest growing religion. They have placed themselves out of harmony with God. Their natures have become so debased with evil that the manifestation of His glory to them is a consuming fire. It's like lighting a match in a haystack. They are sort of harmony with Him that they go up in flames. Let men beware lest they neglect the lessons conveyed to them in the words of Christ. As he warned the disciple of Jerusalem's destruction, giving them a sign of, his, of its approaching ruin, that they might make their escape, so he has warned the world of the day of his final destruction, and he has given them tokens of his approach, that all who may flee will flee he declares, then shall be the sign in the sun and in the moons and in the stars. We saw the dark day. We saw the falling of the stars. Yes. Uh, distress upon nations. We can see it. Where can you go? Japan, Australia, New Zealand. Where? Where is a safe place? Alaska. The, the Arctic was on fire yesterday. Did you hear what I said? Yesterday, the Arctic was on fire. Those who behold these harbingers of his coming are to know that it is near. Even at the door. Watch ye therefore are his words. They that heed the warning shall not be left in darkness. You go into many churches today. Darkness. 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 The absence of light. They that heed the warning shall not be left in darkness. That the day should overtake them unawares. But to them that will watch the day of the Lord so cometh. That will not watch rather. <clears throat> His coming is as a thief in the night. Mm. Yet the word says as we come to a close. The world is no more ready to credit the, the message of this time than were the Jews 2,000 years ago. Nothing has changed. Come when it may, the day of God will come unawares. Mr. Cameraman, the internet, 
Irregardless of how loud and how long we preach, the prophecy, the prophecy says, come when it may, the day of the Lord will come unawares to the ungodly. It will be a shocking and overwhelming surprise. surprise. <laughs> when life is going on it, in its unwavering rounds. Yesterday, you got up, you got a shower, you put on your nice things, you went driving. I don't know where you went. Vacation, work, wherever. You came back home and life continues. Nothing changes. Today, I am begging you to make a change. Yes. Break that glass. Yes. Break that pattern. Do something different. Amen. Absorbed in pleasure. Pleasure. Eating is a pleasure. Drinking. Games. Television. Movies. Pleasure. Absorbed in pleasure. In business, making money. Uh, in traffic, in money making, when religious leaders are magnifying the world's progress and enlightenment. We have made such advancement. We are going to do climate change. And the people are lulled in a false sense of security. Ah, they have a solution. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Then, as the midnight thief steals within the unguarded dwelling, so shall sudden destruction come upon the careless and the ungodly and they shall not escape. Who will this sudden destruction come upon? The wicked? The ungodly and who else? The careless. That brings us to our question. Finally. How shall we escape? if we neglect so great a salvation. Paul raised that question in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. How shall we escape? Neglect. Uh, uh, the meaning is to give little attention or respect to. And the second meaning is to leave undone or unattended to es uh, especially through Carelessness. Implicit in uh, neglect. It's not rebellion. It's not wicked people. It's not, I don't want him. Get him out of my face. No. The careless. You know where that is now? That's not on the street anymore. It's in here. Right here. That's yes. here. The unbelieving is out there. Yeah. But the word says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? To give little attention or respect to, to leave undone or unattended, to especially through carelessness. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That bothers me. That bothers me. You know why it bothers me? Sister Lawrence, I grew up in it. I don't have to look over the fence. Right home. I didn't recognize it then, but now I can see clearly. Neglect. How? God can't give an answer for that. Do you know why? He has made every provision. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? <laughs> there is no answer in this question. Every provision is made. Die not a fool's death, but flee while you can. The city of refuge is there. It's waiting. God has made every provision. If you, even if you've killed a man, as long as you didn't kill him willingly, the city of refuge is open. The gates were open night and day. You could enter 
any time. Because accidents don't pick any special time to happen. <laughs> the Savior is waiting. Brethren, we cannot afford to die a fool's death. Is there any among us who have not given their heart to Jesus? You have not been baptized. Let me flip the question. All those who have been baptized and given their hearts to Jesus, put up your hands. Praise God. We must not neglect the salvation. If we do, you're going to hear a haunting voice in the back of your head for the rest of your life. Because the Lord has laid it on me a burden. Do you know why it's such a burden? This part of the passage which says, comes when it may. Mm -hmm. The day of Christ is going to be an overwhelming surprise mm -hmm. to the ungodly, those who are trifling with his commandments. Not the big rebels out there. <laughs> The careless. The careless. I want us to pray together today. Because I want us to have strength. You and me. And I'm going to invite you to come forward for a little bit. And as you come, make a prayer in your heart. Make a deal with your Savior. I can't help you. I have no nail prints in my hand. I never will, unless during the upcoming um, tribulation they decide to crucify me. But I will never give myself freely, freely to die for you. I know it would be a waste. It, it, it wouldn't do any good. It won't do. It's contaminated blood. A transfusion from me won't give you life. <laughs> the Savior is waiting. Let's sing that song as we gather. And as you contemplate in your hearts. Every single one of us is different. I guarantee we all have different challenges. But we have one. Even one. If you're down to one, you're very close. You're almost there. But we have challenges. Let us pray. <laughs> Our Divine Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in your courts today. We thank you for the commitment that your children have made to walk with you in uprightness and in righteousness. To give their lives in baptism so, Lord, they can be justified. That day by day they can be sanctified. So that you can wash sin away from our lives. And you can make us holy die. For your word teach that we must all come. To the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. You in whom the fullness of the God and dwell bodily. Lord this is not a work that we can accomplish of ourselves. This is not something we can attain unto. But Lord as you have promised in your word. You will send your Holy Spirit that will convict us of sin. Yes. And that Holy Spirit will bring back to our minds all things that we need to repent of. Yes. Yes. And you already promised likewise that if we confess our sins. Hallelujah. Yes. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us from all our sins. And then to cleanse us from unrighteousness. So not only will you forgive us, Lord, but you'll blot out our sins. Because it's the blotting out that brings the cleansing. For our sins will be sought for one day, but they shall not be found. Help us to take advantage of this great salvation. Help us, Lord, not to ignore or spurn the calls that you've made to Israel. For thousands of years, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. You want to give us rest from the least to the greatest. You want to give us rest. Those things that beset us and trouble us. Those things that cause us to break your commandments. 
those things that cause us to put ourselves before you, those things that make us not believe you when you say that you, oh, uh, the righteous have never been forsaken nor is seen begging bread. You will not leave us by the way for the wicked to laugh and mock us when we trust in you. You will be there. The cattle upon a thousand hills belong to you. When you look at the herds of cattle, Lord. We can't see the end from the beginning. There are so many. But all the diamond, all the gold is yours. But what is that to you? Just one soul. The loss of one soul is a calamity. Lord, you do not want to lose any. I don't see any identical twins here today. And even if there were, there are two separate souls again. Yes. Each person here today is unique. Yes. And you have a love. You fashioned that person in the womb. Yes. You prepared them for a place in your kingdom. Yes. And it is a great calamity when you look in their apartment yes. and it is empty. It is a great calamity when their names have to be blotted out of the book of life. It is not your desire. It is not your purpose. Yes. So Lord, we pray that you will lift up your people Israel. Lord, we would that others would come. But if this is the only set, Lord, we pray that you will sanctify them today and let them to understand that you love them. Help us to see, Lord, that you have a people that you are gathering out in this time. It is a different time. It's a new time. And you are gathering out your people to save them in your kingdom. Help us then to flee to the city of refuge yes. and to stay there yes. until the death of the high priest. Yes. You've died, you've shed your blood, yes. and you're going to come in judgment. Yes. Then you will exonerate us. Yes. Not because we are good, but because you have given us your righteousness Amen. and we have accepted Amen. it. Amen. Bless us to this end, we pray. Give us strength. There are many prayers in the prayer box. We pray that you will look at them. Yes. Read each line. Yes. Read each tear. Yes. Read each burden. Yes. And fix it, Lord. You can fix it. Yes. Fix the lives. Change the lives of sin to lives of righteousness. Yes. If it's needs, you have all the gold in the world. You can yes. supply our needs. Yes. So give them faith to trust in us. Give us faith, O oh Lord, to walk this pilgrim path. Yes. We thank you again. We praise you. And we bless your name. For we ask these mercies in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, our dear Savior. Amen. And for your sake. Amen. 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 Thank you.